Hello, this is Neil, the art instructor at masterpaintingnow.com. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and draw a starfire here. The first thing you want to do is you want to divide a line almost in half. Uh, the upper body, the upper part is a little bit longer than the lower part, and then the upper part you divide in half. So basically her head takes up half of the upper portion. If you've drawn uh, or taken any of my figure courses, either the Master Human figure or the anatomy course for figure drawing and, and comics, then you already know the basics of drawing the, the human figure and then you just plug in these proportions to it and that's really how you draw any any sort of cartoon character uh, so you know it would be very beneficial if I were to say hey look um, this is how you draw a cartoon character by the way this is just commentary if you want the if you want to watch the actual uh, instructional video the actual lesson on how to draw her uh, the real-time lesson then uh, just sign up for my my VIP uh, my VIP thing it's really easy I'll be sending it out here soon. Uh, so yeah, just sign up to the VIP thing. It's on my website. Just go to masterpaintingnow.com and then uh, sign up for the VIP. It's free. And then you'll get an email from me. And just look for emails that say either Master Painting in the title or VIP in the title. It'll start with that. That's how you know it's coming from me. And I don't I don't spam anyone. I just let you know when I got uh, new, new free lessons for you and stuff. So Right. Anyway, so um, after I have the, the basic sketch of a of a pose I want, and you know, how how do you come out with the pose? Like, how do you figure out a pose? And that's what's important about, you know, when you want to draw a character like Starfire or any character, first you want to study her, study her proportions. It's very important that you know her proportions. So, figure out where her halfway point is on her body, figure out how much of her body is in the upper half and how much of, of it is in the lower half. So with Starfire, what I found out is that you, when you divide her in half at the at the crotch, her upper body is actually longer than her lower body because she has such a big head so it includes a big head also notice that that upper the upper portion her head takes up about half that proportion so her torso is very tiny and then the rest is her legs so it makes her legs look very long the reason why her legs look so long is because her her torso is so tiny um, so that's the basic proportions of this character once you know the proportions of the character then all you do is you take your knowledge from either one of my courses on figure drawing or somebody else's courses on figure drawing or would, however you have learned to draw figures from imagination, to draw poses from imagination. And once you can do that, then you just figure out a pose, and then you plug in her proportions to that pose. And that's it. And you can, you can, you can take this exact same pose right here and plug in somebody else's proportions. You can actually take it and, and you know, plug in uh, Supergirl's proportions, you know, from, from the typical comic book type character. And, you know, more, more of a realistic looking body. And, you know, it's going to be the same pose, but you're going to apply totally different proportions to it. Um, so what I did is I did the initial sketch in, in blue, and then when I come back over to add some details with clothing and stuff like that, I go in red. It just makes it easier for I can see what I'm drawing over. It's a common technique used by um, by cartoonists, that is animators. So it, it works really well. And then now I can go back in with my inking brushes, and I'm using Manga Studio. I'm using EX, uh, Manga Studio 5EX, but the EX doesn't matter. It's I don't know. It's not worth the extra money unless you're going to be doing a lot of comic book work. And you want like e ease of flow, of flowing between all your different comic book pages. But if you're already used to like using Photoshop or something like that, or older versions of Manga Studio where you didn't have that option to view multiple pages at once, then it's not a big deal. You just save each page in, in a folder, uh, and then, you know, like chapter one and save all those in a folder, and then you can just, you know, open them up and work on them as you want. And that's how I usually work anyway. So I haven't even tried the new features yet. And to see how much it would streamline my workflow when I do a comic, because I do I do want to do another comic again. I'm just trying to find the time to do it. So I'm trying to find someone else to do a lot of my um, marketing type stuff for me, so that I can free some time up for myself to work on another comic. I like to make another graphic novel. Uh, this time only like a 40 page graphic novel. But yeah, anyway. So um, in the real time video, you know, I go through the inking process there, and I talk about what I'm doing, you know, and and uh, how, how to do it, and, and the smoothness of of manga studio it's just awesome uh, compared to photoshop and everything else the smoothness of manga studio is just absolutely fantastic and so at first i i realized you know that's this color is not going to work and at the time i didn't know how to change the brightness and color hue i i know how to do it now uh, i figured it out but uh, while i was doing this video I, I didn't know how to do it so i just like repainted her but anyway um i go ahead and you know choose all the colors and just fill them in and with this ink brush there i'm telling you, the ink brush is so awesome and you can make it both vector or regular raster. And what's cool about number five now, uh, EX, not, not EX, just five in general, uh, Mango Studio 5, 
is that you could um, use a vector layer and it works almost just like a raster layer. Like when you erase stuff, it doesn't like get rid of big portions and things like that. So it works very similar. And so it's, it makes it much easier to get vector artwork, but feeling like you're working on, on raster. So you feel like you're you know painting in Photoshop even better though. I think the engine altogether is better. I show a quick technique here and I explain in detail in the, in the real time video where you can make a, just like in Photoshop, you can make a copy of the, of the layer and then take that layer and add, um, multiply and then make a, uh, a mask over it. And then you can draw on the mask to reveal that layer. And it's just an easy way to add shadows uh, to your character. And you can also do the same thing to add highlights to your character. And obviously, you know, in the cartoon, she's not going to have all this stuff. Um, it takes longer to do that when you're animating. Some cartoons do do have shadows like um, boondocks and stuff, but for the most part, um, American cartoons don't have shadows in them. And so that's pretty much it. I just finish her up here, uh, add a little bit of highlights, and also I have a finished uh, version of her where I take her a little bit further. If you want to see that finished version, I'm going to link to it in the video. And uh, also sign up for the VIP lessons to get her, the actual real-time lessons. It's an hour, it's an hour-long lesson, and I go through you know all the details uh, and explain everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. For those that know my teaching style, then you know what to expect. But hey, anyway, um, I just thought I'd give them commentary instead of just like speed video with music. But if you enjoyed this uh, and you like it, go ahead and share it. I appreciate it. Just cl click the share button and share it with uh, your favorite favorite social network. I'm sure other people will like it too. All right, thank you for watching.